What is up, bros? How you doing? Ladies and gentlemen, hope y'all are doing well in the coronavirus, quarantine, lockdown situation going on right now. So, you know, a lot of us, we're starting to game, we're starting to watch Netflix, some of us are reading more. So, um, I've been reading a book for the past couple weeks, I finished it, so I thought, you know, I'd do a review on it. The book, it is, as you can see from the title of this video, Friday Night Lights by H.G. Bissinger. Now, this book, it came out in, a, it was published in 1990, and... I was surprised when I saw that it's actually nonfiction. It's it's not a novel like I thought it was originally. Because I used to watch the show um, a few years ago. I, I watched the whole show, Friday Night Lights, great show. And that show is, um, it's not nonfiction, right? So it's all the characters are made up. Um, you know the deal. But this book which the show is based on is, you know, loosely based on this book is actually written by H.G. Bissinger as he lived in Odessa, Texas, where the story takes place. He lived there for one year and all the characters, all the events, everything that happens, uh, it's all real. It's all real. Um, and he received a lot of backlash actually because you know, Odessa, um, the people there, they, they accepted him to come in for one whole year and, like, basically be, like, shadow the team and, you know, to write his book. But they had no idea that he was going to be so, I guess, brutally honest and show the whole picture of this team, of the culture in Odessa, warts and all. Um, so once the book was was published and... It blew up. It got so popular, you know, within 1990 and then the years following. Um, like, he was really, like, he wasn't welcome. He wasn't welcome back in uh, Odessa. because He even had some death threats. He It says in the afterward that there were some death threats. He, he was going to do a book signing in Odessa, like, a year afterward, but... They decided to cancel it because there were so many people pissed off about him about this book. So he received a lot of criticism for that from people. Um, but it made for a great book, man. And this book, it's a it's about a football team in Odessa, Texas. A high school football team where basically this high school football team is the um, the glory of the town. Everyone in town cares so much about the team, about the players, um, about the coach, but really more than anything, whether they're winning or not, right? So everybody in the town, they care so much about this football team and whether they're successful or not. And it's uh, it's so interesting because it the book becomes not really just about football um but really just the american obsession with football um almost to the point where to a dangerous level and uh so that's why the book is so interesting because you see some people and again real people all the names in here real people um just doing crazy things like uh anything that's not super crazy like the watermelon feed when, uh, which is like just like their way to get hyped up before the season and relive memories past. Um, you know, it's basically like a cult. It's it's so weird. And the only way to really fully understand it is to read the book. Um, and I got some quotes for you guys that I want to talk about. The first one actually comes from the afterword where H.G. Bissinger, um, he talks about uh, the criticism he faced once the book came out. Um, and so here's a quote I have. Um, Along the way, other things happened. He's talking about how his intention was to write like a, a book um, that just showed the, the nice positive elements of a bonding football team. Um, but, but along the way, some other things happened. 
the most ugly racism I have ever encountered. Utterly misplaced educational priorities. A town that wasn't bad or evil, but had lost any ability to judge itself. It would have been a journalistic disgrace to ignore these elements. So, um, yeah, he, as he says, he thought it would just be kind of like a simple, basic, you know, go, go football team kind of book. Um, but it started, the situation he realized was so much more complex. And it made the book way better because of that. Uh, and then we, we, we go later on. I got some other quotes here. Um, you know, it, one huge theme of this book is is how these football players, they're living such high glory, uh, glorified times, um, such high highs, but it it's such a hot flash in the pan um, because it's over, you know? It's over after they graduate high school. So you have all these players that were on the, the football team, which, again, is so highly regarded in this town. And they're basically gods amongst men. And that's how they're treated. And they, you know, do everything they want. They break the rules. They party every night. They're getting in fights with people. And basically living life without consequences. But once their football career their brief football career is over, um, they're just like, they don't know what to do. And um, it, it shows just, I guess, how people can be at a loss in a situation like this. And uh, let me find the quote for something like that. Yeah, here it is. You live in a fairy tale for that one year of your life, said his wife. You're worshipped. And that year is over and you're like anyone else. We all feel that our husbands have been unhappier with everything after they got out of it. You see your name up in lights and people follow you and they put your name in the newspaper and then all of a sudden, the season is over. So that's a quote from one of the wives of an old player, um, you know, years after he graduated. And because the author, H.G. Bissinger, he doesn't only stick with just the football team, you know, the players and the coaches. He interviews all tons of people in the town, ranging from, you know, the principal of the school to uh, judges in the town, to policemen, to wives of old players, to old players themselves. He really digs so deep in this town. And he criticizes the town in a lot of parts, like the, the education system is uh, so messed up where basically the, the football players don't even um, they don't even study at all really except for a few of them um, and they get away with it even though there's a rule in place called the uh, I forgot what the rule is called but there's a clever name for it but there they have to be 70% or higher to be able to play but you see that a lot of teachers cut the cut them some slack, you know, and I know that's a problem, uh, across the whole country, even at a collegiate level where players, you know, they face a lot of pressure and, uh, they do a lot of hard work, but yet they're expected to get good grades too. Um, and so a lot of times teachers let it slide. They get other students to do stuff for them. So those students can seem cool. So yeah, uh, it's crazy. The detail he goes in about this and the, these uh, these people, these players, they feel a lot of pressure from Odessa, especially the coaches. They feel a lot of pressure, too, because it's like if you don't win, um, just like when you do win in this town, the highs are so high. But if you lose, you know, there's a point in this season because he's with the team for one season where they lose two games and their record, spoiler, Ends up being, I think, um, eight and two. But that's in this town. That's viewed as like not that great. Even though you only lost two games for them, it's like you lost two games, and so they face enormous pressure, especially the coaches. And you know, if they start doing bad, then the radio in the town starts talking trash about them. Um, people start writing letters to them. People start putting for sale signs in their yards. It's really horrible. Um, and so here's a quote about that. 
I don't think they realize these are 16, 17, 18 year old kids, she once said. I don't think they realize these are coaches. They are men. They are not gods. They don't realize it's a game and they look at them like they're professional football players. They are kids, high school kids, the sons of somebody, and they expect them to be perfect. So yeah, that's a quote from, uh, I think, Gaines is, who's the head coach of the team, his wife. Um, so yeah, guys, it's a really great book. Uh, I loved the show when it came out. Um, but the show isn't that connected to this book, to be honest. I think the movie is more connected to the book. Uh, I haven't seen the movie, though. Um, but yeah, guys, I would I would totally give this book a shot if you if you love reading. Um, or if you love football especially, I would give this book a shot. And um, yeah, it's a good one. It, it's it's not fiction, but it reads like a novel. So let me know if you want to see more book reviews, guys. You know, stay safe out there. People are getting really bored more than anything. So the perfect time to do some reading, I think. Um, so you can check check this book out. I think it's good. If there's anything bad about it, I would say... The the writing style sometimes, he does this thing a lot in this book where he'll give examples of, it's hard to explain, but basically he'll give examples of um, how, how he describes things. It's like, and he'll do, it's really repetitive. He'll have really long paragraphs of, um, ha, ha, let me think of an example of saying that, oh, it wasn't. The the rain that stopped the game that night. It wasn't the explosion in the gas factory down the street that stopped the game last night. It wasn't the buses that were delayed that stopped the game that night. He'll do that, like that kind of thing. It wasn't this for like long-ass paragraphs, and he does it many times throughout the whole book um, to the point where towards the end you're like, oh, my God. Like you just start skipping those because they, they don't all hit the same. They don't... Um, so that would probably be the only thing is his uh, his writing style can get a little bit redundant sometimes. Um, but other than that, I, I would give this book a good grade. I'd give it an 8 out of 10. I really liked it. Uh, so yeah, uh, stay safe out there, guys. I'll smell you all soon. Uh, hit that like, hit that comment, hit that subscribe. It helps me out. Uh, talk to you all soon.